welcome back welcome back so currently we're on a project that we started yesterday finished up this entire space and now we're about to get started on another side i wanted to capitalize on this opportunity because these are those rare opportunities that allows me to put a visual to all the things that we talk about every time we go on estimates or or, or we discuss projects before during and especially after and this is one of those after scenarios um in regards to natural stone specifically, however, it applies across the field, across different types of materials, is a general rule of thumb. And that general rule of thumb is that the shinier something is, the more the imperfections begin to appear. Um, so because we are in the business of restoring and beautifying and bringing sheen back to life and bringing rooms back to, back to life, a lot of times it's associated with a level of sheen. So if we're doing some natural stone refinishing, it's about repolishing. If we're doing vinyl, it's about waxing, linoleum, it's about waxing. Um, if we're dealing with, uh, with concrete, you know, it could be concrete guard, it could be burnishing, it could be poly. So there's all sorts of different applications that's used to give you the sheen that you're looking for. But it's at the very end of the job when you start seeing some patterns emerge. And this is a great before and after because we still have so as you can see behind me here, we got the green shiny floor. And right here behind me, you got the original dull green non-shiny floor. So it's a great before and after scenario for you. Let me show you what I'm talking about. So if you look across this floor, everything looks fantastic. The sheen is beautiful. You see the reflectivity of the lights reflecting off the floor. Gorgeous, clean floor without having a strip. This was a top scrub and recoat. And now that we recoated it and we polished it, we finished it with three coats of traffic, commercial, high grade, 24% solids acrylic wax. And it gives you a gorgeous shine as you could see. But as you could see, there's like these streaks that are kind of going across, almost, I don't know, taint like. And it goes all the way across the floor. So whenever we see things like this, you always want to look for patterns, right? Because when something is repetitious, it's a pattern that happened at some point in time during some form of um, production, not so much maintenance. So you see it consistently going over and it keeps going all the way across. Well, the beauty about this floor is that there's two different types of floors. So you have the same providers, the same solutions, the same cleaners, the same wax on two types of floors. But you could see that one has these tracks. And then when you go to the other one, no tracks whatsoever, which then tells you that these tracks are a part of this green floor. Now the only question is why? So, and this is just me kind of uh, supposing things, right? So it's a, lone, a linoleum floor, which is thin. When it's thin, it's flexible. When it's flexible, it follows the contour on off of whatever it could be on. So what we see here could be a result of production, the way it's manufactured, the way it's, um, it, it's not woven because it's not fabric, but the way it's constructed together could be showing here, or it could be the way the floor was prepped. Um, so right over here on the other side, I'm going to show you a before area and the before area you could barely see it and that's where it actually begins to show my point here that before it was shiny, you couldn't see it. After it was shiny, you can't help but to see it. So here we are following and starting the rest of the other day. As you could see, this area here was cleaned and that's because now that we're coming back, this is a finished area here. So we don't wanna bring the swing machine anywhere near this area, right? So we're beginning from here, working our way back that way and then we begin to coat. We can go ahead and coat on top of this and blend it out. But looking at this floor, it's not as shiny as it is behind me, but can you see the faint tracks? going on an angle. Not sure if it's translating in the camera, but right there, you can see the exact same pattern. As we come down here, we get closer to this door, it begins to become a little more relevant. You can see it begin to stand out. But without bringing attention to what I just showed you, you really don't see it. You just see a dull floor that needs to be cleaned up. So after the service, after the top scrubbing, after the cleaning, and at here, let me capitalize on this. So you can clearly see it here, but you could see it here better. 
this area here still has the residual wax that we top scrubbed from you know the pre-service and you could see that it stands out more here than it does here and that's the area that we already scrubbed off so a little bit of sheen you could see it more less of a sheen you could see it less and then when you recoat it bam it completely just stands out so more often than not, whenever we provide service, we always say that things are limited to pre-existing conditions. Oftentimes, a lot of the work that we do exposes all of these and it's everything and not with this type of floor but it's everything from grout to caulk to the way installation was done to size of gaps in seams and corners and what should be used to um, uh, fill up this gap is it grout is it caulk um, is it a poly is it a wax do you put one coat two coats do you top scrub do you strip it what is it that you want so with that said just capitalizing on this opportunity so you could see a very very good before after and also exposing pre-existing conditions so whenever i find and i see more tidbits like this i'll be more than happy to go ahead and share it with you but hopefully the information continues to be informative educational please subscribe like and contact us if we could be of service